Bandung is the capital of West Java Province in Indonesia. According to 2015 estimate, it is the third largest city in Indonesia after Jakarta and Surabaya with over 2.5 million inhabitants, while Greater Bandung is the country's second largest metropolitan area with over 8.5 million inhabitants. Located 768 meters (2520 feet) above sea level, approximately 140 kilometers (87 miles) southeast of Jakarta, Bandung has cooler year-round temperatures than most other Indonesian cities. The city lies on a river basin surrounded by volcanic mountains. This topography provides a natural defense system, which was the primary reason for the Dutch East Indies government. S plan to move the colony capital from Batavia, modern-day Jakarta, to Bandung. The Dutch colonials first established tea plantations around the mountains in the 18th century, and a road was constructed to connect the plantation area to the colonial capital Batavia, 180 kilometers, 112 miles to the northwest. The Dutch inhabitants of Bandung demanded the establishment of a municipality, Gemond, which was granted in 1906, and Bandung gradually developed into a resort city for plantation owners. Luxurious hotels, restaurants, cafes, and European boutiques were opened, hence the city was nicknamed Parish van Java Dutch. The Paris of Java. After Indonesia declared independence in 1945, the city experienced rapid development and urbanization, transforming Bandung from an idyllic town into a dense 16,500 people per square kilometer per square kilometer metropolitan area, a living space for over 8.5 million people. New skyscrapers, high-rise buildings, bridges, and gardens have been constructed. Natural resources have been heavily exploited, particularly by conversion of protected upland area into highland villas and real estate. Also, although the city has encountered many problems, ranging from waste disposal and floods to a complicated traffic system resulting from a lack of road infrastructure, Bandung still attracts large numbers of tourists, weekend sightseers, and migrants from other parts of Indonesia. The city has won a Regional Environmental Sustainability Award for having the cleanest air among other major cities in ASEAN countries in 2017. The city has also become known as a smart city, leveraging technology to improve government services, including social media, that alert the authorities to issues such as floods or traffic jams. The first Asian African Conference, also known as the Bandung Conference, was hosted in Bandung by President Sukarno in 1955. Redevelopment of the international airport was completed in 2016. To improve infrastructure, the construction of a Jakarta Bandung high speed rail and Bandung Metro Kopsel, a type of indigenous automated people mover, APM, will begin in 2018. The new Bandung Kertajati International Airport opened in June 2018 with a 2,500 meter long runway and only one flight per day to Surabaya. Geography Bandung, the capital of West Java Province, located about 180 kilometers (110 miles) southeast of Jakarta, is the third largest city in Indonesia. Its elevation is 768 meters (2520 feet) above sea level and is surrounded by up to 2400 meters (7900 feet) high late tertiary and quaternary volcanic terrain. The 400 square kilometers flat of central Bandung Plain is situated in the middle of 2340.88 square kilometers, 903.82 square miles wide of the Bandung Basin. The basin comprises Bandung, the Chimahi City, part of Bandung Regency, part of West Bandung Regency, and part of Sumedang Regency. The basin's main river is the Sitaram, one of its branches, the Sikapunding, divides Bandung from north to south before it merges with Sitaram again in Dekolot. The Bandung Basin is an important source of water for potable water, irrigation, and fisheries, with its 6,147 million cubic meters .1 billion cu feet of groundwater being a major reservoir for the city. The northern section of Bandung is hillier than other parts of the city, and the distinguished truncated flat peak shape of the Tankuban Prahu volcano Tankuban Prahu literally means, upside down boat can be seen from the city to the north. Long-term volcanic activity has created fertile andesol soil in the north, suitable for intensive rice, fruit, tea, tobacco, and coffee plantations. 
In the south and east, alluvial soils deposited by the Sikapunding River predominate. Geological data shows that the Bandung Basin is located on an ancient volcano, known as Mount Sunda, erected up to 3,000 to 4,000 meters to feet during the Pleistocene Age. Two large-scale eruptions took place, the first formed the basin and the second est, 55,000 before present, blocked the Sidaram River, turning the basin into a lake known as the Great Prehistoric Lake of Bandung. The lake drained away, for reasons which are the subject of ongoing debate among geologists. History The official name of the city during the colonial Dutch East Indies period was Bandung. The earliest reference to the area dates back to 1488, although archaeological findings suggest a type of Homo erectus species had long previously lived on the banks of the Sikapunding River and around the old lake of Bandung. During the 17th and 18th centuries, the Dutch East Indies Company (VOC) established plantations in the Bandung area. In 1786, a supply road connecting Batavia (now Jakarta, Bogor, Chanjer, Bandung, Sumedang, and Siribon was constructed. In 1809, Napoleon Bonaparte, French emperor and conqueror of much of Europe, including the Netherlands and its colonies, ordered the Dutch Indies governor H. W. Dandles to improve the defensive systems of Java to protect against the British in India. Dandles built a road, stretching approximately 1,000 kilometers (620 miles) from the west to the east coast of Java, passing through Bandung. In 1810, the road was laid down in Bandung and was named De Groot Post Weg or the Great Post Road, the present-day location of Asia Africa Street. Under Dandel's orders, R. A. Waranatakusuma II, the chief administrator of the Bandung Regency at that time, moved office from Krapiak, in the south, to a place near a pair of holy city wells Sumor Bandung, the present-day site of the city square Ailan Ailan. He built his Dalem Palace, Masjid Agong, the Grand Mosque, and Pendopo, public official meeting place, in the classical Sundanese orientation, with the Pendopo facing Tankuban Prahu Mountain, which was believed to have a mystical ambience. In 1880, the first major railroad between Batavia and Bandung was completed, boosting light industry in Bandung. Chinese flocked into the city to help run facilities, services and as vendors. The area adjacent to the train station is still recognizable as the old Chinatown district. In 1906, Bandung was given the status of Gemont municipality, and then 20 years later Stadsgemont city municipality. Beginning of time the early 1920s, the Dutch East Indies government made plans to move their capital from Batavia to Bandung. Accordingly, during this decade, the Dutch colonial government commenced construction of military barracks, the central government building Governments Bedridgeman, the present-day Gadum Sat and other government buildings. However, this plan, was cut short by World War II, after which the Dutch were not able to re-establish their colony due to the Indonesian Declaration of Independence. The fertile area of the Parahyangan Mountains surrounding Bandung supports productive tea plantations. In the 19th century, Franz Junghun introduced the Sanchona Kina plant. With its cooler elevated landscape, surrounded by major plantations, Bandung became an exclusive European resort area. Rich plantation owners visited the city on weekends, attracting ladies and business people from the capital, Batavia. Braga Street grew into a promenade street with cafes, restaurants and boutique shops. Two Art Deco-style hotels, Savoy Homan and Pronger, were built in the vicinity of the Concordia Society, a clubhouse for the wealthy with a large ballroom and a theater. After Indonesian independence in 1945, Bandung was designated the capital of West Java Province. During the 1945–1949 independence struggle against the Netherlands seeking to retake its colonies in the Dutch East Indies, some of the heaviest battles occurred in and around Bandung. At the end of World War II Dutch troops were virtually absent in Java. To assist the restoration of Dutch sovereignty, the British took a military hold on Java major cities, and the British military commander set an ultimatum for the Indonesian combatants in Bandung to leave the city. In response, on 24 March 1946, much of the southern part of Bandung was deliberately set alight as the combatants left, an event known as Bandung Loden API or the Bandung Sea of Fire. 
In 1955, the first Asian African Conference, also known as the Bandung Conference, was hosted in Bandung by President Sokarno, and attended by the heads of states representing 29 independent countries from Asia and Africa. The conference venue was at the Gadum Merdeka, the former Concordia Society building. The conference announced ten points of declaration for the promotion of world peace promotion and for opposition against colonialism, and is known as the Declaration of Bandung. This was followed by a wave of nationalism and decolonization movements around the globe which remapped world politics. The conference was also the first international conference of people of color in the history of mankind. Richard Wright in his book, The Color Curtain, claims that there was epic meaning of the conference for people of color around the world. In 1987, the city boundary was expanded by the Greater Bandung, Bandung Raya Plan, with a relocation of higher concentration development zones outside the city in an attempt to dilute population density in the old city. During this development, the city core was often uprooted, with old buildings torn down, lot sizes regrouped and rezoned, changing idyllic residential areas to commercial zones with bustling chain supermarkets, malls, banks, and upscale developments. In 2005, an Asian African conference was partly held in Bandung, attended by world leaders such as Indonesian President Susilo B. Yudhoyono. President of China Hu Jintao, Prime Minister of India Manmohan Singh, President of South Africa Thabo Mbeki, President of Nigeria Abasanjo, and other luminaries. Climate Bandung experiences tropical monsoon climate AM, according to Köppen climate classification as the driest month precipitation total is below 60 mm in, bordering with subtropical highland climate CFB. The wettest month is February with precipitation total 255.0 mm .04 in, while the driest month is September with precipitation total 50.0 mm .97 in. The average temperature throughout the year tends to be cooler than most cities in Indonesia due to the altitude influence. The average temperature throughout the year only has little variation due to its location near the equator. Administration The city area in 1906 was 19.22 square kilometers, 7.42 square miles, and by 1987 it was expanded to 167.2965 square kilometers. The city administration is divided into 30 districts, and 153 villages, For development purposes, the 30 districts are grouped into 8 sub-city regions. The sub-city regions of Bandung are Arkamanik, Sibayaniang, Kuris, Kordon, Gedibij, Ujungbaring, Bojonagara and Tegalega. The mayor, Wali Kota, leads the city administration. Since 2008, city residents have directly voted for a mayor. Previously mayors were nominated and selected by the city council, the Regional People's Representative Council DPRD. As of 2003, the total number of city administration personnel was 20,163. Administrative districts Bandung City is divided into 30 districts listed below with their populations at the 2010 census. Demographics In 2005 the population of Bandung was 2,290,464, with a density of 13,693 per square kilometers 35,465 per square miles. The May 2010 census enumerated 2,394,873 people. Based on data from the Indonesian Statistics Department, the population of Bandung in 2014 was 2,470,802, making Bandung the third largest city in Indonesia. The majority of Bandung's population are of Sundanese descent. Javanese are the largest minority and mostly come from nearby central Java and the eastern part of Java. Other minorities include Minang, Minahasan, Chinese, Batak, Malay, Korean, Indian, and Japanese. Bandung also possesses significant international communities, compared with other Indonesian cities. Architecture Old buildings and structures 
Bandung is home to numerous examples of Dutch colonial architecture, most notably the tropical Art Deco, dubbed New Indies style. Henri McLean Pont was among the first Dutch architects to recognize the importance of combining each architectural style with local cultural traditions. He stressed that modern architecture should interact with local history and native elements. In 1920, Pont planned and designed buildings for the first technical university in the Dutch East Indies, Technische Hogeschool Te Bandung, the present-day Institute Technologie Bandung, after which he was named as a professor of architecture at the university. A striking local Sundanese roof style is clearly seen adorning the top of the campus ceremonial hall, and is embedded in his artwork. In the same year, another Dutch architect J. Gerber designed Government's Bedrijven government companies in line with the colonial government plan to move the capital from Batavia to Bandung. The building is an example of a harmonious mixture between West and East architectural styles, particularly the Italian Renaissance style of arch structures in the wings and pendopo-like structures commonly found in Java in the middle section. The building is known as Gadum Sat, named after the distinguished small satay-shaped structure on the roof, and is today used as the head office of the West Java Provincial Government and House of Representatives. The architectural blending of modern and native traditional was followed by several Dutch architects who shaped the city landmarks. In the 1930s, Bandung became known as an architectural laboratory due to the many Dutch architects who experimented with new architectural designs. Albert Albers added the streamlined Moderna style to the Art Deco by designing the Dennis Bank 1936 and renovated the Savoy Homan Hotel 1939. C. P. W. Shoemaker was one of architects who strongly added native elements in his artworks, including the Villa Azola 1932, Hotel Pronger 1929, the Regional Military Headquarter 1918, Gadum Merdeka 1921, and ITB Rectorate Building 1925. Modern high-rise buildings though Bandung is known for its large number of old Dutch architecture buildings, the city is going through high-rise building boom recently. At present there are more than 100 high-rise building in the city and many more under construction or planned. The following list includes buildings in Bandung, which are completed or topped off and which are above 300 feet 91 meters. Culture Bandung is considered a major and significant cultural hub in Indonesia. Most people in the surrounding province of West Java are Sundanese. Sundanese language is often spoken as the first language and is commonly used as informal language for communication in streets, school, campus, work, and markets, while Indonesian, Indonesia's national language and a lingua franca among its many ethnic units, is used as the lingua franca, the official language and the language of government, businesses, and instruction at schools. Tourism Bandung is a popular weekend destination for residents of Jakarta. The cooler climate of the highland plantation area, variety of food, less expensive fashion shops located in factory outlets and distros, golf courses, and the zoo, are some of the attractions of the city. Bandung is also a popular shopping destination due to cheap textile and fashion products, especially for Malaysian and Singaporean tourists. In the 1990s, local designers opened denim clothing stores along Sihampelis Street, which was transformed into a jean street. The city attracts people from other big cities to buy local fashion wares, as they are cheaper than branded items. Beside at Sihampelis Street, many factory outlets also opened at Riau Street, Setiabudi Street, and Juanda Street known as Dago. Textile factories on the outskirts of Bandung have opened factory outlets on site selling what is marketed as Sisa Export, rejected or over-produced export quality items. Trans Studio Mall, Bandung Inda Plaza, Sihampelas Walk, Paris Van Java Mall and ID 23 Pascal Shopping Center are popular shopping centers in Bandung. Significant tourist sites near Bandung include the Tangkuban Prahu Volcano Crater to the north, the striking Kawaputa Volcano Lake, and Patangong Lake, a lake surrounded by tea plantations about 50 km miles to the south of the city. To view the Bandung Basin clearly in its mountain surroundings, visitors travel to the Bangkor Protected Forest Area Kawasan Hutan Lindung, Song Dong and Arkamanik, to the slopes of West Manglaeng Mountain in an area known as Karangan Tilu, with entry from Padasuka and Sakahiam to the north. The forest is located in 1,500 meters 4, feet above sea level and is covered with pine trees managed by a government corporation per Hutani and can be accessed with 30 minutes drive from downtown. Visitors going to the north of the city also find Taman Hutan Raya IR. 
H. Juanda. The Sakayam area also hosts Bukit Moko, a tourist spot famous for its views and its steel statue of a giant star called Punchak Bintang. Bandung has several museums that should be visited by tourists, such as the Geological Museum of Bandung, the Indonesia Postal Museum, Sri Baduga Museum, and the Asian African Conference Museum. Sports Bandung is the home town of the Perseve Bandung, a professional football club which currently competes in the highest tier of Indonesian football, the Liga 1, formerly known as the Indonesia Super League. ISL. Other popular sports in Bandung include badminton. The JNE Bandung Utama competes in the Indonesian Basketball League and plays its home games in the Gore Sitra Arena. The roads leading up to Lembong and Dago are popular routes for mountain cycling during the weekend, especially since Jalan IR, H. Juanda is zoned for car-free day on Sunday mornings. In the hills around Bandung, there are several golf courses. Media Bandung has several local daily newspapers, including Pakiran Rakyat, Galamedia and Tribune Jabar. Several national and local television stations operate in Bandung, including Trans 7, Trans TV, Net, TV1, RCTI, SCTV, Indosiar, ANTV, MNC TV, GTV, Metro TV, RTV Bandung, Arajawali Televisi Network, Compass TV Jawa Bharat, a Compass TV Network, and TVRI. Many radio stations broadcast from Bandung, INTV Bandung, a INTV network. Cable TV is widely available by several service providers serving wide range of international channels such as CNN, BBC, Fox, Channel, MTV, CNBC, Bloomberg, CGTN, NHK, SBS, CNA and many more. Bandung was featured in the 9th and 10th leg of the American reality series The Amazing Race 23. Transportation Road Bandung can be accessed by highways from Jakarta. An inter-city toll highway called Sipularang Toll Road, connecting Jakarta, Karawang, Purwakarta, Padalarang and Bandung, was completed in May 2005 and is the fastest way to reach Bandung from the capital by road. Driving time is about 1.5 hours on average. There are three other options, the Punchak Route, Jakarta Chanjur, Sukabumi Bandung, Purwakarta Route, Jakarta Sikampik, Purwakarta Sikalong Wedan Padalarang Chimahi Bandung, and the Subang Route, Jakarta Sikampik Subang Lembong Bandung. From cities further east, Siriban, Tasik Malaya and Central Java Province, Bandung can be accessed through the main provincial road. Indonesian National Route 3 links Bandung with the rest of Java towards Selegan and Ketapang, Banyuwangi. The Pasapati Bridge was built to relieve traffic congestion in the city for east-west transport. The 2.8 km miles cable stayed bridge lies through the Sikapunding Valley. It is 30 to 60 meters to 197 feet wide and, after extensive delays, it was finally completed in June 2005, following financial investment from Kuwait. The bridge is part of Bandung's comprehensive inner-city highways plan. Public transportation Taxis and mobile apps transport are widely available. The primary means of public transportation is by minibus, called Angkot from Angkutan. Transportation. In Kota. City. They are privately operated and cheap, serving multiple routes throughout the city, but are basic transport and not known for being comfortable. To find exact Angkot routes, information is available through the drivers or at terminals. City-owned buses, called Domri, operate on longer high-capacity routes. Bandung has two inter-city bus terminals, Luipanjang, serving buses from the west, and Sakahiam, serving buses from the east. Both are at full capacity and are to be replaced by a new terminal at Gedebij on 15 hectares 37 acres land, after which the old terminals will function as inner-city terminals. The new terminal will be located next to the Gedebij railway station near of Gedebij Container Dry Port. Air Bandung Hussain Sastranagara International Airport serves direct domestic flights to Batam, Pekanbaru, Maidan, Bundar Lampung, Surabaya, Yogyakarta, Denpasar, Semarang, Banjarmasin, Makassar, and also international services to, from Kuala Lumpur and Singapore. 
The airport is located near the Durgantara Aerospace Complex and Durgantara Fairground. The Kurtajati International Airport in Majalenka Regency is built to replace the Hussain Sastranagara Airport. Railway Bandung has two large railway stations, Bandung and Kiarakondong stations. Other smaller stations are Chimindi, Ander, Siroyom, Sikudapadia, and Gedibaj stations only for freight service. Railway lines connect Bandung to Chanjur, Jakarta, Purwakarta, Bekasi, Karawang, and Sikampak to the west, and Surabaya, Malang, Yogyakarta, and Solo to the east. It is also a major means of transportation for people living in the suburban areas of Chimahi, Padalarang, Rancikak, Sikalenka, and Siliani. In 2012 Bandung Commuter Train Phase 1 was scheduled to be built to connect Padalarang, Chimahi, Bandung, and Sikalenka with 13 trans-metro Bandung bus corridors to service feeders. Phase 2 will connect Sikalenka to Jatininger. Current and future development 32 bus shelters for Trans Metro Bandung similar to Transjakarta along Sokarno Hata Street were finished in August 2011 at a cost of RP 13.1 billion 1.54 million dollars 30 additional buses joined the existing operation of 10 buses after all the shelters were finished on the 21st of June 2011 Domri launched two buses on the Sibaru Keban Kelapa specially for women passengers only with women drivers on the 5th of August 2011 Yusuf Kala announced that he would like to build a monorail in Bandung with value of RP 4 trillion 470 million dollars as of April 2012 a cable car project Bandung Skybridge to connect Pasteur to Sabuga Tamansari, was said to be 90% complete and awaiting legal authorization to operate. However, as of 2016, the project has still to be realized. To ease Sihampelis traffic congestion, a skywalk for pedestrians only from Sihampelis to Tamansari was built with budget of RP 45 billion. The skywalk, named Terrace Sihampelis, was inaugurated by the mayor of Bandung, Ridwan Kamil, on 4 February 2017. Vehicles will be able to be parked at Tamansari. Bandung City has also announced an intention to build LRT light rail transit. Science and education There are hundreds of public and private schools in Bandung and several state-funded and administered junior high schools SMP Negri and state high schools SMA Negri. At least 16 universities, three of which are state-owned, and 45 professional schools are scattered across the city. Education from social sciences and technology to tourism education can be found at one of those universities. Colleges and universities Among the universities located in Bandung are, Institut Technologi Bandung, Bandung Institute of Technology, Universitas Pajadyaran, Pajadyaran University, Parahyangan Catholic University, Universitas Islam Bandung, Bandung Islamic University, Universitas Kristen Maranatha, Maranatha Christian University, Universitas Islam Nusantara, Nusantara Islamic University, Universitas Pendidikan Indonesia, Indonesia University of Education, Universitas Islam Negri Sunan Gunung Jati, Sunan Gunung Jati Islamic State University, Universitas Pasundan, Pasundan University, Institut Teknologi Telkom, Telkom Institute of Technology, Polytechnic Negri Bandung, Bandung State Polytechnic, and Sekola Tinggi Parawisata Bandung, Bandung Institute of Tourism, all being considered among the best universities in their respective fields of specialty in Indonesia. Established 1920, Institute Technologi Bandung is Indonesia's oldest and most prestigious technical university. Universitas Pendidikan Indonesia formerly IKIP Bandung, established in 1954, is one of the first institutions of higher education established after Indonesian independence and is currently a leading education university in the country. Universitas Pajadyaran established in 1956, is considered to be one of the best universities in the country in the fields of medicine, law, communication, and economics. Primary and secondary schools International schools Bandung Alliance Intercultural School Bandung Independent School Bandung Japanese School 
Bina Bongsa School Bandung Stamford School Deutsche Schule Bandung defunct. Observatories In the north of Bandung, Bascha Observatory is the only observatory in Indonesia. Construction of the observatory began in 1923 and was completed in 1928. In 1922, the first international publication from Bascha Observatory was published and in 1959, the observatory was absorbed as a part of the Department of Astronomy at Institut Technologi Bandung, the Bandung Institute of Technology. Economy the Bandung economy is mainly built upon tourism, business, creative industry, high-tech and manufacturing industries, educational institutions, technology, retail services, financial services, pharmaceutical companies, and food production. Bandung has nearly 50 higher educational institutions and is among the most popular destination for education in Indonesia. The once quiet residential district of Dago has become an important business and entertainment center with chic cafes and restaurants spread out along Dago Street. In the early 1990 South Sihampelis Street became a popular clothing store location and remains so to this day. Creative culture has shaped some of the Bandung economy. Small businesses known as distro sell non-trademarked products made by local designers. Books, indie label records, magazines, fashion products, and other accessories are typical distro products. Distros are popular with young people and distance themselves from factory outlets in term of philosophy. Distros arise from individual designers and young entrepreneurs, while factory outlet products are from large scale garment factories. The Bandung City Administration has agreed to substantially develop seven industrial and trade areas for Bandung specialty products Banang Jati Knitting Industrial and Trade Center, Sigindawa Textile Trade Center. Sihampelas Jeans Trade Center Suki Tea and Oblong Shirt Industrial Center Sibaduit Shoes Industrial Center Sibuntu Tofu and Tempeh Industrial Center Sukamulia Sukajati Dal Industrial Center The city of Bandung is part of the UNESCO Creative Cities Network which it joined in 2015. Environmental issues the north of the city serves as a water reservoir for Bandung, however, the area has seen substantial residential development. Several attempts to protect this area have been made, including the creation of reserves such as the Wanda National Park and Pungkrut, but development continues. Regular flooding in Bandung S South also presents a real and dangerous ongoing problem. From mid 2005, Bandung faced another environmental disaster when the city S landfill site was re-evaluated after a garbage slide in 2005 which buried a village, Kampung Gaja, beneath it, killing over a hundred people. The accumulation of 8,000 cubic meters d 3,300 cu foot per kilo second of domestic garbage piled up, causes severe air pollution by local burning, the spread of disease, and water contamination. The provincial government has so far failed in its attempts to solve the garbage issue, nevertheless, it was awarded in 2015 as the least polluted city in the country from the Forestry and Environment Ministry, and a further regional award in 2017 was also given from ASEAN as the cleanest air among other major cities in ASEAN countries. Notable people Twin towns, sister cities Bandung has sister relationships with a number of towns worldwide Fort Worth, United States Hamamatsu, Japan Suwon, South Korea Hangzhou, China Luzhou, China Yingko, China Almaty, Kazakhstan Cotabato City, Philippines Braunschweig, Germany Kuantan, Malaysia Petaling Jaya, Malaysia Seremban, Malaysia Pekanbaru, Indonesia Namur, Belgium 
Pakan Tutong, Brunei Darussalam. Awards 1997, Adipura Award, for the achievement of the cleanest city in Indonesia 2015, Adipura Award, for the achievement of the cleanest city in Indonesia, the Adipura consists of a trophy and an award. References External links Bandung Travel Guide from Wikivoyage City website